Hello folks and welcome to Andrew's Travel Tips. It's been exactly a year ago today that I was in Japan, which is the only time I've really done any extensive traveling completely on my own. And let me tell you, it was an experience. Now this was not a vacation, this was travel, because I was not staying in hotels, and uh, it was fun, but I was not well rested by the end of it, let me say that much. No relaxation at all. So if you're traveling anywhere, especially to a country that you don't speak the language and you can't read it either, and you're going completely by yourself, which in hindsight, maybe not such a good idea, you're definitely going to want to bring a map that you've already converted over before you get there. Now you could get lucky and they might have some maps in English or whatever language you speak. I assume if you're watching this then you speak uh, Mandarin or something. But that's kind of rule number one, because I managed to get myself lost a lot. And I did bring maps with me. That was the other problem. Sometimes maps are not always accurate. Uh, which can make it extremely aggravating when you're trying to figure out where to go. For example, I was looking for a hostel in Osaka. It was literally beside the subway stop. Like, you walk out of the subway exit and it's right there. But that's not what Google Maps told me. So I wandered around what was essentially a Japanese ghetto for almost three full hours, carrying all of my luggage that I had with me. Uh, and this was already after a very long day that I had had prior in Kyoto. So, uh, what ended up happening was I ran into a homeless community, which was actually really cool. A bunch of old Japanese men uh, that were repairing electrical equipment and it looked like they were reselling it and stuff. They had their own little community and... Anyway. Uh, so I was lucky enough to find, after talking to six or seven different store owners, a woman who spoke a little bit of English and she hand drew me a map and then walked me halfway back uh, to the hostel. So, whoever you were, thank you little Japanese lady. I know exactly where your store is, but I have no idea what it's called. Another thing to do, get travel insurance. This is probably an obvious point, but just do it. It's not that expensive, and especially if you're Canadian, then you're covered by Canadian health insurance, no matter what happens to you. Another huge tip, but this is probably pretty obvious, is always carry physical currency when you're there. Hopefully the currency that they use in the country. You can get pretty far using a credit card for stuff. It's easy, you know, you don't have to do that much. There's no math involved, especially since you may or may not understand how the taxation system works there. But the bottom line is, when you're actually traveling through an area, you're gonna need cash more often than not. Another good tip that I learned actually from an old high school teacher who taught me a lot of interesting things. Also taught me about love. <laughs> he told me that whenever you're traveling to a new place, unless you have a really strict schedule, like you've, you're going on a tour at this time and you got to be here by this time, uh, which is important, that you should just not wear a watch. Just go with the flow and the day will feel a lot longer and your explore exploration will feel that much better. Because you're not constraining yourself based on time. Oh, I want to eat at 2 o'clock. Eat when you feel hungry. You shouldn't tap the table because it's going to resonate in the microphone. And that leads into another point of traveling. Explore. A lot of people live their vacations out of hotels and with travel groups and blah blah blah. Just go out and do it. Just wander the streets, get lost somewhere. I got lost in Tokyo. I got lost in Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. The only three places I went. I didn't get lost in Nara though. This place was awesome. Anyway, I got lost all the time, but you know what? It was never aggravating or annoying. It was a little scary when I got lost in Kyoto because I ended up in a bad part of town. Or Osaka. I don't even know where I was. But getting lost is super rewarding. As long as you don't, you know, get lost in the woods somewhere, which... As you saw in one of my much earlier videos, I actually did get lost in a bamboo grove for a little bit, but that's, that's irrelevant. But that's where your good memories are going to come from. The little corner stores that you find uh, that are like something out of a movie, like, like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, except a lot smaller. That's where all the fun stuff is going to have. Or a, another huge example, when I got to the Osaka train station, or subway station, or whatever it was, uh, I was really, really, really hungry. I had accidentally hiked a mountain that morning. Inari Shrine, again, that's in a different video. Um, so I hadn't eaten all day and I'd been awake all morning and sweating a lot. So I really wanted to get some food. Hey, there's a buffet place upstairs, gonna hit it up. But what did I find upstairs? A Pokemon Center. Now I could go on for an hour talking about this place, but let's just say as a kid who grew up with Pokemon, it blew my mind. And I wouldn't have found this had I not just gone exploring within that building because I couldn't read the signs. I didn't even know it was there. And so it's pretty awesome. You could like 
catch Pokemon. They had toys I'd never even seen or heard of before. Uh, everybody was there trading Pokemon with each other on their DSs. It was pretty awesome. Even if you don't like Pokemon, just to understand the concept of what was going on, it was amazing. And I don't know of any other places, I'm sure there's more in Japan, but in the world that are like that. So explore. And never eat at the same restaurant twice, especially when you're traveling. Always try to find a new place to go, because that's just where the excitement lies. Also, if you travel like I did, which means on a very strict budget, and you're staying in hostels or sleeping outside, I highly recommend headphones, even if you don't have a music player. I recommend doing both, but when you're trying to sleep in a hostel and there's some Chinese woman that's rearranging everything at her backpack at 2.30 in the morning, you're going to be really happy that you brought those headphones so you can get a couple hours of sleep before you have to take a bus to go to your next location. Anyway, I've got plenty of other tips on other things in general, including travel tips, so if you guys like this video, tell me. If you didn't like this video, my birthday's coming up soon, so don't just save your criticisms for after Tuesday. And then go nuts, just, uh, I'll be older, wiser, and more mature, I'll be able to take it. Not like this soft shell I have now. <laughs> Thank you guys, it's good to be back, it feels good to be making videos again, and hopefully I'm gonna get back into the swing of things. I just recorded something that's a little more ambitious than I normally do. It might take me a little longer to edit it, we're gonna see what happens. You'll know when I know. Anyways guys, as always, peace out!